Hi guys, Sujesh here with an other video on easy math. Today we will see how to differentiate inverse functions. We have discussed what are inverse functions in our topic called as functions. Today let's see how to differentiate them. First, what are the inverse functions? Okay, you know what is a function, right? In a function, if you input in a value, you will get a result. You, basically, functions are represented by sets. If there is a set of some values, then function is the relation to relation of each value in that set to an other value in an other set, right? It is called a function. Now, inverse of a function. What is inverse of a function? In a function, if you input the values from set A, you will get the result from set B. In, in inverse functions, if we input a value from set B, you will result in the corresponding value in the set A. It is called the inverse of a function. Means, if you take a function from A to B, if you input in the value 1 from A, then you will get the result 2 in B. And if there is an other function from B to A, it's not A to B, it's from B to A such that if you input the number 2 from the set B, you will result in the number 1 from the set A. It is called inverse of a function. Let there be two functions, y is equal to f of x and g of y is equal to x. Now, g is the inverse of f. Let g be the inverse function of f. If you want an example of this inverse function, you can take the example of cos x. If f of x if f of x is equal to cos x, then it means that f of x is nothing but y. y is equal to cos x. Now, if we do cos inverse on both sides, you will get x is equal to cos inverse of y. x is nothing but g of y. g of y is cos inverse of y. As you can observe here, cos inverse is the inverse function of cos. If you want sine, sine inverse is the inverse function of sine. Now, let's see how to differentiate this. Now, what does differentiating a function mean? Differentiating a function mean it is the change in that function divided by change in its variable, in its, in, in its dependent variable. Change in that function divided by its variable. Change in its variable means it is limit of change in its variable tends to zero change in the function by change in the variable it is the general it is general formula of differentiation differentiation if you want to differentiate a function f of x it is nothing but f of x plus h limit h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x by h h is going to zero now here h is nothing but change in the variable right now here you need to differentiate g y g of y you need to differentiate g of y here g of y differentiating g of y is nothing but the change in the function g of y with the change in the variable y right means it is dx by dy change in the variable x when the y changes in an infinitesimally small value it means g inverse of y or g dash of y is nothing but dx by dy. Now we know in differentiation you need to if you need to find dx by dy you can simply do 1 by dy by dx right. You can simply do 1 by dy by dx. dy by dx is nothing but f inverse of x right f dash of x. So the derivative of g of y is nothing but the reciprocal of the derivative of the function f means g dash of y is equal to 1 by f dash of x. Now we got the formula, but how can we tell that it is correct? We need to verify this, right? Let's verify this by cosine. Let, let there be a function f of x. Let there be a function f of x, which is cosine x. Let there be a function f of x is equal to cosine of x. Now let there be another function g of y which is nothing but the inverse of f. The inverse of f is denoted as f inverse of y. We know that the inverse of cos function is nothing but the cos inverse function. So it is cos inverse of y. g of y is nothing but cos inverse of y. Now we need to 
differentiate g of y. So we need to differentiate cos inverse of y. Okay, we know that there is a formula for cos inverse of y. It is nothing but 1 over square root of 1 minus y square. Minus 1 over square root of 1 minus y square. Usually we will denote it as cos inverse x, but here we need cos inverse y, right? So in place of x, we will write y. You will get negative 1 over square root of 1 minus y square. Now let's see what we will get if we use this formula. Now d by dy of g of y is nothing but 1 by d by dx of f of x, right? As we discussed before. It is nothing but 1 over d by dx of f of x is nothing but the function cosine x. So dy by dx, dx by dy or it is nothing but d by dy of cos inverse y. d by dy of cos inverse y is equal to minus d by dx of cos x is nothing but negative sin x, right? So I will get negative in the front minus 1 over sin x d by dy of cos inverse y is equal to minus 1 by sin x. Okay, now we need to differentiate cos inverse of y, but there is no relation between y and x, right? We need, we just need to find the derivative of cos inverse y. Take off this concept, we just need to find the derivative of cos inverse y. But if we find the value in x, what is x? It is not dependent with y, right? So what you need to do is, you should replace sin x with some function of y. Okay, now given that y is equal to cosine x, right? Now, can we find sin x if we know the value of the cosine x? We know that sin square x plus cos square x is equal to 1, right? Means sin square x is nothing but 1 minus cosine square x. So, sin x is nothing but square root of 1 minus cos x, cos square x. Now, cos square x is nothing but cos x whole square. Cos x means y, so it is y square. So, sin x is nothing but square root of 1 minus y square. So, d by d by of cos inverse y is nothing but minus 1 by sin x. Replace sin x with square root of 1 minus y square. So, d by d by of cos inverse y is equal to minus 1 by square root of 1 minus y square. As well as this is the basic formula. So, we have verified the formula and the formula is right. Okay guys, this is for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If not, comment and below. I'll answer them in the next video.